Circle of Hope Network, doing life and being church together. Good morning, everybody. I woke up before my alarm. I'm excited to be here this morning. I wore a suit because I came to do business with God. Amen? Everybody scream, I'm here to do business. Let's try it again. I'm here to do business. Look to your neighbor and say, I'm here to do business. Man, when it comes to Jesus, I mean business. I have had many amazing experiences in ministry. Many. One of my most amazing ministry experiences happened a few years ago. Had I never been saved, had I never given my life to Jesus, there are certain things I would have never experienced. I'd like to share a story with you. Nine years ago, I was involved in a shooting. Three people at about 1.30 in the morning drove up to my mother's home. And one guy came out with a loaded shotgun and ran up to my mother's house and unloaded the clip. You can imagine what that sounds like in a house. It sounded like semi-trucks had ran into the house. I can't get into the full story, but long story short, the man that shot my house went to jail. And I don't know what happened to him in jail, but within about a few months of getting out of jail, who, this person committed suicide. He had a long list of charges already, and I don't know what happened to him in jail, and he committed suicide in jail. And this, sorry, he committed suicide when he got out of jail, and this person was a close friend of mine. Now, he also had a brother who I too was friends with. And his brother had, I had heard, had a serious anger towards me. He had felt that I had played a part in his brother's death. And to be honest with you, so did I. I had realized how our problems had maybe added to his decision. And so for years as I became a Christian, I always wondered, when will I see this person's brother? He was in biker gangs and is in biker gangs and here I was giving my life to God and still looking over my shoulder. When will I encounter this person? Now, a few years ago in Regina, I was doing prison ministry. That's an area I'm very effective in as I once too was an inmate. And so I was doing prison ministry there, and the, the, the inmates started coming in just like every other Sunday, and my heart began to smash against my ribs as I saw him. It had been over five years since I saw him, and here in the prison, I see him. And so I go against the wall, and they start walking past me, and here comes the, the man that hates me and, and is looking for me. And I put my hand out to him. I say, do you remember me? And he looks at me and says, no. And I say, it's Jorge. See, I look different. God has changed a lot about me. I don't look the same. I used to be a lot taller. (laughs) Oh, he says, little George. Yeah. I say, can I talk to you after the service? Yeah. Me and him, we sit down, I grab a chair and go a chair in front of him, and I say these words to him. I said, I am sorry for the part that I played in your brother's death. Your brother was a brother to me, and you know that. He'd been to my house to eat. He's eaten my mom's food, and he was just crazy, I know. I don't know what happened that night, but it's over, and I'm sorry. And this man, this biker dude, he he breaks down in tears. And he says, Jorge, you have no idea how much anger and hate I have towards you. 
Every time I'd see your business, I used to own a business, I'd want to run in there and just shoot the place up, and specifically you. I hated you. He says, and he says, I have anger in my life. On his, on his, on his uh, fingers, he has the word F-U written, and on his punching hand, he has his brother's name, and he says, every time I punch somebody, because he's a hitman, every time I punch somebody, I, 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 I do it in, in honor of my brother, and I wanted it to be you. And he says, but now, Jorge, I can uh, find some healing in this. And we both broke down. God brought two enemies together. God will do that. I would have never experienced that had I never given my life to Christ and had Jesus never came to die for me. Never. There are certain things that we will only experience if we give our life to Jesus. Yes or no? Jesus came to die and give us salvation. I'm here to tell you something, that that's not the only reason he came. That's not the only reason he came. Salvation is a product of his death, but it's not the only thing. And I'm not downplaying his salvation. I just told you a story I only experienced because he came to die. I've been taken out of jail cells. I've been taken out of addiction. I've been taken out of suicide rooms in jail. So believe me, I'm thankful for his salvation. But that's not the only reason he came to earth. On the cross, Jesus gave you salvation. And there's more to it if you want it. My father was a butcher. But not the kind of butcher you go to. We lived in the projects and in the basement my father just had a saw so he figured he was also a butcher. And he would buy cows and and he'd cut them up and sell them to people. And uh, my father taught me something. He said, you never kill a whole cow just for one piece. You don't kill them just for the prime rib. You got to use the whole cow. So in my culture, we have brain tacos. We got ear tacos. We got tongue tacos. We got throat tacos. We got stomach tacos. We got intestine tacos. And it keeps going down. I'll let your imagination do the rest. But he taught me this, that you don't waste any of it. You use it all. Jesus is the cow. And there are many parts of him. And I have a question for you this morning. Do you make the most out of Jesus' sacrifice? Do you, are you getting the most out of the sacrifice that Jesus came to give you? We use it all. I want to use it all in my life. I want all of Jesus, not just that part. I want it all. Jesus didn't come just to die. He came to do much more than that. He also healed people, yes or no? He also gave sight to the blind. He made the lame walk. He resurrected people from the dead. In fact, the book of John says this, that if we were to write everything that Jesus did, what? The world couldn't even contain it. So he came to do more than just die. And in John 10.10, we find what I believe is the right hand of why Jesus came, other than his death. I have come that they may have life, and life more what? Abundantly. Everybody, after they have an encounter with God, will have a more abundant life. The blind, after he could see, abundant. The man, after he, he walked, abundant. The mother who got her child back. Abundance. Jesus wants you to have more life and to have it more abundantly. But yet, church, I've met saved people who are bitter. Bitter. Don't look at anybody right now. I've met saved people who are angry. I've met saved people who are negative. I've met saved people who just can't seem to be happy. And why be saved? I watched a video on YouTube once. There was this whale. It was caught up. It was all tied up in these knots. You know, those big fisherman nets. And they thought it was dead, Maxi. And so they they went up to it. They just wanted to free it at least. And as they freed it, this whale started to, 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 to move. 
and they freed them, and, and they, we were just, they were happy. They, they clapped their hands, and, and the whale went its own way. And then out of nowhere, this whale started jumping out of the water. That whale had once been, had once been tied up, and now it had been freed. It had once been, uh, 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 it had once accepted its death and someone came to free it. And the way that it jumped out of the water was it showing its appreciation, its celebration of salvation. How do you show your appreciation of salvation? How do you celebrate your salvation? That was a whale. And I believe that we're smarter than whales, yes or no? And if a whale can jump out of the water to give a few men a celebration, can we give a round of applause for the Lord for what he did? There's a story of a black prince who was taken from Africa, stripped of his crown, stripped of his jewelry, brought to this side of the world. And as they brought him up on the, on, on the, on the auction mart or whatever you want to call it, the stage, he started screaming, whoever buys me, I won't work for you. I won't work for you, he'd scream. And they'd auction him off 100, 200, I'm not going to work for you. Finally, this chubby white man buys him. He was resisting so much that the guy had to grab him by, by the by the, the, his shackles on his arms, and he brings him over to, to, to where he pays for his slave, and the slave is screaming, I will not serve you. The chubby white man buys, pays for his slave. He turns to his slave and gives him his freedom, and the slave drops on his knees and says, I'll serve you forever. What are your results of being saved, church? We're the salt of the earth. That's me, that's you. But if salt has lost its flavor, it's no good. If you can't celebrate salvation, you can't celebrate Jesus, what's up then? Jesus says, I have come that you may have life and life more abundant. Everybody say abundant. I want to tell you what the word abundant in Greek here means. Over and above. More than is necessary. Superior, extraordinary, surpassing, uncommon, remarkable, more excellent, more, much more. Somebody say amen to that. That's what God wants to give you. Do you believe that God wants to give you that? Do you believe or do you believe that you're trapped where you are? I'm too old, I'm too young, I'm too skinny, I'm too fat, I'm too ugly. More, much more. Do you believe your income is maxed out? Do you believe your spirituality is maxed out? Your your marriage is maxed out? Your church is maxed out? If you are willing to do something about it, you can have abundance in your life. If Jesus says, uh, 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 I come to give you life and life more abundantly, or do we believe that only the lottery will give us this kind of life? Well, if I win the lottery, then I'll have an extraordinary life. You know what I'm saying? Anybody here ever fantasize about winning the lottery? I have. I don't buy it, but I fantasize about it. Oh, if I win the lottery, then I can really have that more, much more. I want to tell you something, leaders, and I want to tell you something, church. Uh, The average ticket for a lottery is about five bucks. If you buy one every week, it's about $350 a year. If you've spent $350 on lottery and only given $100 to the church, I know what you believe. Jesus says, I'm real food. I'm real water. I'm the one that can give this to you. If you're willing to invest in me, I invest in you. If you abide in me, I abide in you. Seek first the kingdom of God and what? And then what? All will come. Now that might mean if your finances are low, get a new job. Get up another job. That might mean if you're not happy with your health, green smoothies, broccoli. 
less potato chips. I can't tell you nothing you don't know. All of the little steps we take are steps towards abundance. Abundance is worked for, church. All the rain in the world could fall on my field. But if I have planted no seed, I should not expect a crop. Yes or no? The issue is we expect abundance without doing anything. We want to buy a $1 lottery ticket and win a million. No. Abundance is intentional. I was counseling a friend of mine. He's been married three years and only been, almost been divorced four times, so he's doing pretty good. I said to him, are you happy? He says, uh, yeah. I could see in his voice he didn't want to admit what was up. I said, tell me what you really want to say. Then he said to me, I'm not happy. I said, perfect. He said to me, I'm not where I want to be physically, spiritually, emotionally, in my marriage, all the above. And he says, I'm not happy. And I said to him, perfect. Now we can grow from here. The first thing is accepting that we are not happy in a certain area of our life. You know that area, stop pretending that you're happy in it. If your marriage ain't that good, don't pretend it is. Accept, we need work here. Now we can grow. So I said to him, now we can grow. Now that you've accepted this, what can we do to get you out of this situation? And then I left him with a thought. I said to him, listen, you don't have to do any of this if you don't want to. But don't complain about it. If you're not willing to do anything about it, don't complain about it. Yes or no? I asked my mother once if she was going to retire. My mother said no. She said, I'm too poor to retire. But this wasn't the reason, the main reason. She says, Jorge, I like to travel. And she says, when I work and I'm taking care of these older folks, I'm remembering what I'm trying to live abundantly for. She says, I like to travel. My mother is a single mother. She has traveled to over seven countries in 2018 alone. Because to her, Emil, she works because she says, I want to travel. I'm old, but I want to work. I want to travel. When I was a kid, I was the kind of kid that, that made little mazes and sold them for 10 cents. I was, I'm not telling you to do this, but I was stealing crab apples and whole roots of rhubarb and just trying to sell them. Because I just wanted abundance in a certain area of my life. We all have something that we can be doing to experience abundance. You want spiritual abundance, read your Bible more. You came to the right place this morning if you want spiritual abundance, at least to take a step in it. Every step is a step towards abundance. And nobody here is too young or too old to live a more abundant life in every area of their life. I was visiting a couple the other day. 97, 98. Oh. I expected them, I said, man, what am I going to talk to a 97, 98 year old? I was honestly afraid at the funeral would happen right there. And I'm not joking. So, they, so I'd show up there and I'm expecting this 97, 98, them to be on their bed and very fragile. So I show up there and the grandma, the, the 97 year old zips up beside me on a wheelchair, almost running over my toe. And then the husband comes in a walker. Uh, your pastor, oh, yeah, yeah, nice to meet you. She said, come, let's go for a walk. Let's go to our room. They live in an old folks home. I said, absolutely. She says, can you push my wife? I said, yeah. So now I'm pushing his wife. And uh, he says to me, pastor, can you speed up? You're holding me up. <laughs> I said, yeah, I can do that, sir. So we get to the room. And they start talking to me because they're going to talk to me about their funeral. Said, we'd like you to do our funeral. But first they asked me this question, Maxie. They said, are you a real pastor? <laughs> Apparently I don't look like a pastor. That's all right. They said, uh, but we don't want our funeral to be soon. I said, why? I said, we got great grandchildren that we want to meet. 
That's why we're zipping up and down the hallway. That's why we're eating healthy, because we want to see our great-grandchildren. I fell back on my chair. I said, this is abundance. People taking whatever step they can so they can experience more. It's never too late, church, to reach out to experience abundance of God. On the cross was a criminal, and in his last second of life, he reaches out to Jesus, and that brother will be in abundance with us, yes or no? Today, I believe this, church, listen carefully. We as God's people should have the best lives. We aren't nobodies. We're we're the children of God. We, We should be the happy people, the blessed people, not the depressed people. The promise of abundance is for us. It's for me. It's for you. That's what I believe. Now, abundance looks different for everybody. Abundance for me looks different from abundance to you because we each have an individual relationship with Christ. But there's one thing that I know that in this room, there are people in this room that in a specific area of their life need the abundance of Jesus to flow into. It might be health, it might be wealth, it might be your relationship, it might be your children, or you might simply just need to re- recommit to the Lord. I was once completely lost. And it didn't, and, it, and no matter what I did, no matter, no matter how hard I worked, no matter how hard I screamed, I, I could not figure it out. But I would say, I can do this. I'm strong. I can do this on my own. But no, I can't do it. I'm weak. I can't do this on my own. But through God, I will and I have. And on a day like today, church, at a church service like this, I said, I need the abundance of God in a certain area of my life. Pride aside, ego aside, if you need the abundance of Jesus in an area of your life, I want you to come here and I'm going to pray for you. Grab somebody's hand. God bless you. Isn't it amazing that we all need Jesus in a certain area of our lives? You thought you were the only one. I want you to raise up that area that you need the abundance. Just close your eyes and raise that area that you need Jesus to pour into this morning. Maybe it's a child that's not in church. Maybe it's your bank account that ain't doing too good and you really need God's help in that area. Maybe it's your marriage. Maybe it's your health. Just raise that up to the Lord right now. Heavenly Father, I thank you that you hear this prayer. I thank you, God, that right now you are touching every single person. Your presence is here. I can feel it. Can anybody else feel it? It's here. Thank you, God, for being here. 
And Heavenly Father, we have put pride aside and ego aside, and we've come forward publicly to tell you that we need you in an area of our lives. In here is represented some broken places, some broken things, some broken relationships, broken kids, and we need a drop of your abundance this morning. So Heavenly Father, may you honor our humility this morning. May you answer our prayer this morning as you see fit. But I pray that whatever area we've lifted up, that starting today, that wheel will move. In the name of Jesus, I pray that and I proclaim that. My mother prayed for me for over eight years while I was selling drugs. Eight years later, I I came to Christ. Five years later, I became a pastor. Four years later, I'm up here preaching. So, Heavenly Father, you started that wheel a long time ago. So I pray, Heavenly Father, that right now, this morning, the wheel will begin to spin. The rain will begin to drop. Show us, Heavenly Father, right now what we can do, what step we can take in this area. Speak to us, God. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Give somebody a hug. Circle of Hope Network. Doing life and being church together.